Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about beneficial organisms for your lawn and garden. We'd like to thank Joe Alanya for liking and sharing the show. And Joe Alanya was one of my first bosses. Hmm. One of my first jobs I ever had. Wow. I was selling cookware door-to-door. How'd you do? (laughs) It's a tough business. (laughs) I was reading a little bit about worms, and Charles Darwin popped up because he did a lot of research with worms. Really? And his father wanted him to become a doctor, so he started to pursue that career, Mm -hmm. but he found that he couldn't stomach dissecting cadavers Hmm. or watching surgery. (laughs) That would be a drawback. So he studied worms for over 40 years, and he carried out a wide range of experiments that no other scientist had ever done before, Hmm. and then he published a book on all this research, and it became a bestseller. (laughs) You believe that? And then I was doing some research on worms, and you know you can get a tapeworm in your body just by eating meat or fish that's not cooked thoroughly enough, Mm -hmm. and they can live inside your body in your intestinal tract for over 30 years, some of these. Didn't you make me watch a video about this? Yeah, and some of it can grow 50 feet long <laughs> yeah. inside your body. Mm. Cook your food. <laughs> Why don't we start with lawns? So if you want a really healthy lawn with very few weeds, something that's going to fight off insects and prevent disease, mm-hmm. you need really healthy soil, which means abundant microorganisms. Mm-hmm. And really good soil. It's going to have a lot of organic material in there. It's going to allow water and air to flow through it. And you want this bacteria and fungi, protozoa. You've got nematodes and worms. All these microscopic things living in your soil. And that breaks down the nutrients so that your plants can absorb it very mm-hmm. easily. And one routine is just adding organic material to your lawn. Like what? So, well, like grass clippings. If you're mulching your grass clippings Mm -hmm. with your lawnmower, these grass clippings are rich in nutrients, so they're providing food for the microorganisms in your lawn. One study said grass clippings provide about a third of the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium that your lawn needs. Wow. Wow which is pretty amazing, so less fertilizing. Mm -hmm. And the key is fine clippings. So you want to keep your mower blade very sharp, and you want to keep the underside of your deck clean. So if you have a mulcher, you want that deck to be clean because it needs that airflow and that movement Mm -hmm. so that it it cuts it up very fine. You want very fine particles. How often should you clean the deck? Well, every time you mow, if you clean it, some of these new lawn mowers will have this little port that you can put a hose on to, Mm -hmm. and then you run your mower while you're running a hose in there, and it cleans it off. But in the beginning of the season, it's not bad to use either a deck spray or a silicone spray Mm -hmm. under your deck, and that way the grass clippings don't stick to it very easy. And there was research done by the Missouri Department of Horticulture, and they showed that grass clippings do not contribute to thatch buildup. So that's Mm. one concern a lot of people have, mulching it. And grass is basically 80 to 90% water. Hmm. then the nutrients in those grass clippings are feeding the microbes and worms in the soil, and Hmm. they break down the thatch. It's like a cycle of life. (laughs) Right. And then another study was done. If people are mulching the leaves that fall in your lawn, Mm -hmm. depending on how many you have, how many trees you have, it can be up to 50% of your lawn's nutritional needs. Wow. So just by mulching the leaves in the fall and Mm -hmm. your grass all summer, you can really get a lot of nutrients. As people with uh, listening to our leaf episode know already. (laughs) Well, in that leaf episode, we talked about organic compost. Mm -hmm. And so a great routine for your lawn that every homeowner should have is adding about a quarter inch to a half an inch of compost to the top of your lawn and then raking it in once a year. So what does this mean? Just buying bags at the store? So you can either buy bags or create your own. And that organic material is going to help your soil, too. So if you have sandy soil that water just flows right through, Mm -hmm. it's going to help retain water and those nutrients and then in clay soil that's that's really compacted or you know it doesn't allow water to flow through it it actually breaks it up it puts all these particles into it it loosens it up and it allows more air and it improves your drainage hmm. the microorganisms and worms also love compost so it's improving the soil it's improving the soil health so how do you spread this in your lawn you, you just like what throw clumps of compost right, all over exactly. the place 
<laughs> so you can you can use a wheelbarrow and then mm. just shovel it. Just kind of take a shovel and whip it to to the side so that you're just putting this mist over the top. You only need about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch once a year. You don't want to smother the grass. Right. If you want to build your own compost pile, you can just add grass clippings and leaves. The most formulas are three parts brown material and one part green material. Mm -hmm. And then you can layer this. So you can have twigs or branches on the bottom for air movement. And then you add all this brown material like leaves. So about three parts leaves. And then green on top of that. So one part grass clippings. And then you're going to keep staging this or keep creating layers. Mm -hmm. And then you want to put a little bit of soil on this because it has all these microorganisms in the soil. And it actually starts breaking it down. You can add red worms or just some earthworms to this and then spray this, mist it with water, maybe you know once or, or twice a week, and then you want to mix it like once a week or so. And that allows air to get into it, and it just starts breaking down and becomes this thick, dark, healthy food for your lawn and mm -hmm. your garden. And you can also add to this, you can add you know, flowers, hair, eggshells, you can put in newspaper, sawdust, coffee grounds, any vegetable and fruit scraps. You don't want to use any manure from anything that eats meat. So you don't want to put your dog waste or cat waste in there. You don't want to put meat, bones, or fish in there. No oil, grease, eggs, or, or any of diseased plants. So if you have an area where you're digging up bad plants, you never want to put anything diseased into this. But you just let this set all year. And by the next year, you're going to have this deep, rich, you know, organic fertilizer mm -hmm. that's just fantastic for your lawn and garden. That was quite a recipe for compost. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What's wild about adding worms to your compost pile is it breaks it down faster, and they're consuming all this paper, coffee grounds, all this stuff in your pile. They yeah. actually eat, and then they spread all this bacteria and microbes through it. They go into the soil, come back out, and there's actually more microorganisms in their waste than the original food source yeah. because they blend this bacteria and things inside their body to this. Yeah, it's and, gross. And it's also packed with minerals that are broken down from moisture when it rains, when mm -hmm. you water your lawn or garden. And then the plants can absorb all these nutrients very easily. Hmm. Where do you get worms? You can get it from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. Well, I mean, I know that because we did that last year. <laughs> but um, So there's places that actually yeah, sell Yeah, oh yeah, worms. a lot of places. In fact, some hardware stores, you know, yeah. you can get worms too. The earthworms tunneling up and down your lawn naturally aerate it. So hmm. you're going to get much better air movement and water penetration. If you're in the Chicago area, I found an interesting company. It's called Healthy Soil Compost. Mm -hmm. And this company, they have bicycles that go around the city and they pick up organic waste, so from homes and businesses. Mm -hmm. And then they turn this into compost for local farmers. So it's taking all this out of the local landfill. That's cool. Yeah, kind of interesting. If you want an organic way to feed your lawn and your microbes, mm -hmm. you can use corn gluten meal. If you put this down in spring, it's going to prevent a lot of weed seeds from germinating. Yeah. It's a slow-release fertilizer, so it slowly breaks down over a period of a few months. And then the microbes love this. Mm -hmm. Happy microbes equal a healthy lawn. <laughs> there you go. If you, you know, It also prevents grass seed from germinating. So if you're going to use this, I would put this down in spring, and it's going to prevent crabgrass and dandelions. Mm -hmm. And then if you're going to overseed, add grass seed to your lawn, then wait till fall mm -hmm. and do it. And one that's highly rated is from Jonathan Green, and it's their Jonathan Green Organic Weed Control. It's all corn gluten meal. It prevents crabgrass, dandelions, and about 20 other weeds from germinating. Hmm. Dr. Earth has an organic and all-natural fertilizer. It's called their Super Natural Lawn Fertilizer. Hmm. And this has five strains of beneficial microbes that they add to this. And so that's going to help break down the nutrients in the soil. And then it has mycorrhiza fungi in there. How are we supposed to know what that is? And the, <laughs> so we talked about that before. This is the fungi that attaches to the roots. Oh, on of our the last podcast. <laughs> right, so it attaches the root and it builds off the root structure to actually make the roots longer mm -hmm. and they capture moisture and break down nutrients and then the grass is able to absorb it very quickly. And then these microbes also break down thatch. Pennington has a turf fertilizer that has the mycorrhiza fungi in there to improve soil health. Mm -hmm. And then when you're looking for fertilizers, if you get these organic fertilizers, they're really going to build the soil health because they have all these beneficial organisms in them. Mm -hmm. 
If you have grubs, Japanese beetles, termites, fleas, even fly problems in your lawn, you can use beneficial nematodes to kill them. Mm -hmm. And nematodes are microscopic worm-like animals that they enter into these pests and they release a bacteria that kills it. Oh, exciting. And then, <laughs> and then the nematode feeds on the dead insect or, or whatever you just killed. It multiplies and then it goes into the soil to find more insects to kill. Mm -hmm. And these are specific for what type of garden pest you have. So when I was doing a little research, I spoke to Don at buglogical.com. Mm -hmm. And he said that they sell three different types of nematodes depending on what your pest is. So you want to make sure that you match your nematodes to your pest. Which they have a really nice website. Yeah, yeah, they do a nice job. If you go to one of the tabs that say pest problems and you click on that, it shows the pest and then what the solution would be. Mm -hmm. When you purchase nematodes, it usually comes packaged in a powder. Mm -hmm. So you mix this into water, and then you put it down with a watering can or a pump sprayer. Usually a, a hose end sprayer is popular. You want to make sure that you wet down your lawn first or your garden. Spray it in, and you want to do this at dusk because they don't like light. <laughs> and they need to work into the soil. So keep the area moist for three or four days after you apply it. And then with these small pests, you're going to see results in a couple of days. And then with larger pests like grubs or weevils, or a Japanese beetle, mm -hmm. it, you might not see results for about two weeks. If you have grubs in your lawn, you can use milky spore. Mm -hmm. And this is a bacteria that attacks a grub, and it's not harmful to beneficial insects, animals, or people. And it comes in a very light powder, so they want you to use a drop spreader to get it into the lawn. You want mm -hmm. to water it in, and then it gets into the soil. And as the grubs are chewing on the roots of grass, they ingest this it starts multiplying out of control inside the grub to such an extent that it kills it, mm -hmm. and then it tears through its body, spilling out billions of new milky spore. I wish people could see your face, how excited you are about this. <laughs> so this is really a cool, non-toxic way to kill grubs. Mm -hmm. doesn't hurt anything else. And one of the top-rated places to get milky spore is stgabrielorganics.com. And so this is something that you apply a couple times over a couple years? Yeah, and actually. And then you, you stop your grub problem forever? Well, for like 15 years. Yeah. yeah, you put it down for two or three years, and you build such an abundance of bacteria in the soil that you don't have to put it down for... You're a killing machine. <laughs> <laughs> Another interesting bacteria are found in mosquito dunks. And this is really important, especially this year with the Zika virus. Yeah, and what's nice about this is it doesn't affect anything other than the mosquito larva. Mm -hmm. So there are these little discs that you put into any standing water around your home, and it dissolves and it releases this bacterium that's highly toxic to mosquito larvae mm -hmm. and all types of mosquitoes and completely harmless to all other animals, humans. You can put this in your bird baths, your rain barrels, your water troughs, fish ponds, and it's only going to kill the mosquito larva. Right. And the top rated, and you're going to find this in most hardware stores, are from Summit Chemical. Right. For your garden, there's a lot of pests that can damage your plants, mm -hmm. so you can use beneficial insects, so really a nice non-toxic way to keep these pests under control. Mm -hmm. And the best way to use these beneficial insects is to know what you're trying to kill. So if you have a problem on your plants, really take a look at the bugs that are on it and then look them up online, mm -hmm. and then you want to match the best beneficial insect to that. So magnifying glass is nice to have. <laughs> Well, because I don't know what we had with uh, the tomatoes last year yeah. on our container garden, but right. something like completely destroyed all the plants. Yeah, I yeah, got a few. And then, yeah, halfway through the season, right. once we're starting to get some really cool tomatoes, mm -hmm. yeah. then it, uh, yeah, something got in there and just devastated it. And I hadn't bought my magnifying glass yet. <laughs> One of the most popular beneficial insects you can get are ladybugs. Mm -hmm. Some people call them lady beetles or ladybirds. And the beetle and the larva... What do you call them? Bugs. <laughs> and the beetle and the larva eat aphids, white flies, mites, some beetle larvae, and thrips. <laughs> and they're considered a good general insect for your garden. And when you order ladybugs, they come in this bag with a wet sponge. And if you don't decide to release them immediately, you can put them in the fridge for a week or so. That's nice. To, to kind of let them hibernate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What you want to do is you want to hose down your plants, and then some people, what they do is once they hose down their plants, they're going to take a spray bottle that's filled with two or three teaspoons of sugar and then spray that on top of the plants, and this gives a nice food source for the ladybugs. 
you want to release them at sundown because they don't tend to fly at night, mm -hmm. which is interesting. And then you want them to stay on the plants overnight, which is going to encourage them to mate. And then sprinkle like them make on. new ladybugs. Yes. And, yeah, and the larva is amazing at killing aphids and mm -hmm. all of these, you know, pests in your garden. You want to... So you need the right mood for the right. ladybugs. <laughs> right. So, you so know, it, at dusk. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Give them some food. <laughs> when you're when you're releasing them, you want to sprinkle them onto the leaves of the plants. If they hit the ground, they're generally going to go, crawl up, but you want to be, you know, actually sprinkling them onto the leaves so that they take hold and then sit there overnight. Take a look at this larva of the ladybug online because it is crazy looking. I mean, it's kind of scary looking. Hmm. So you want to make sure that, you know, you know what it looks like so you're not killing it yeah. or re removing it. <laughs> when ladybugs are attacked, they play dead. Hmm. And then they can also pull up How their... How do they play dead? They don't move. <laughs> they <laughs> they roll over and put their feet up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they can pull their legs up into themselves and release a small amount of blood. Hmm. So it, it deters predators. See, now that's playing dead. <laughs> And then their body has a chemical that's very bitter. And they say that when birds eat them, it usually makes them sick. Hmm. And birds remember what these things look like. Suckers. So, so they don't eat them again. And then they sent up ladybugs onto the space shuttle to study how they would control aphids in microgravity. Hmm. And I guess they did a really nice job. Good because, job, ladybugs. Because we want to protect future gardens on future space stations mm -hmm. and when we're colonizing other planets. Spooky. Another good all-around beneficial insect is green lacewings. I don't think you've spelled anything this episode. L-A-C-E-W-I-N-G. Okay, I feel and, better. And these are really good at eating a wide variety of insects in the larva form. This is where they do their most eating. And what's wild about the larva is they inject a venom into the prey, and then they suck out all the body fluids. <laughs> So nice. they do a nice job. Mm -hmm. Praying mantis are very popular, mm -hmm. but research says that they eat a wide variety of insects, not only the bad ones, but the good ones too. <laughs> so they're kind of voracious eaters. Mm -hmm. If it's moving, they're trying to eat it. Nice. And they can turn their head 180 degrees, mm -hmm. and they have two large compound eyes, so they have very good eyesight. But, right. but most of them only have one ear, and it's located on its belly. And it picks up the ultrasonic sounds produced by bats. Hmm. Did we discuss that in our bat episode? No, no that would have been good. <laughs> oh, maybe yeah, that the flying the flying praying mantis. <laughs> bats have a heck of a time getting them, man. <laughs> For a wide variety of beneficial insects and organisms, some of the top rated companies are Arbico Organics, and that's A R B I C O dash organics dot com, mm -hmm. plantnatural.com buglogical.com and then environmentalfactor.com environmental factor i got nematodes from they come mm -hmm. in a little ball right and they did a really nice job make sure you follow the directions when you order any of these and where they need to be kept how soon they need to be used right i guess i spoke too soon about you spelling huh <laughs> To keep these beneficial insects in your garden and around your lawn, there's been a lot of research done, and they've confirmed that oil of wintergreen attracts a variety of beneficial insects, especially ladybugs and lacewings. Hmm. So they recommend taking cotton balls, putting this oil on it, and mm -hmm. then placing it around your garden or lawn. And it helps set the mood for them, too. Right. <laughs> You want reproduction. <laughs> and then researchers found that most beneficial insects like plants in the daisy family, carrot, dill, cilantro, parsley, fennel, hmm. and then providing water. So shallow bird baths or, or a bunch of stones throughout your garden or small dishes. Mm -hmm. And then you keep these damp every day. Right. And that helps them. With a mosquito dunk in it. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> Do you have anything else to add? I would say a great routine every homeowner should have is adding about a quarter inch of compost to your lawn and garden every year, mm -hmm. and it's going to increase the amount of beneficial organisms in your lawn and actually help create better soil. So this is a good thing to have your kids do, just go into the yard and whip some compost all around? There you go. Good chore to have. <laughs> Get some worms. Make sure you're worm-friendly. Ladybugs, so lace wings. <laughs> so throw the compost throw some worms out let's have a good time <laughs> and then mulch your grass and leaves there you go let's wrap this up you can subscribe to our podcast on itunes stitcher the spotify mobile app and now google play music 
the Android mobile app. No way. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. You can subscribe to that as well. You can download our book, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you do